Well, here we are. It is March 29th, 2024, and this is the weekly newsletter. We Each week we uh, come on here and we talk about auctions, Asian art auctions and other antique auctions from time to time that have occurred in the last week or two. What's in the auction market, news, that sort of thing. Um, how the major auction house is doing. We The last couple of weeks we've been covering pretty heavily the Christie, Sotheby's and Bonham sales in New York. Now we're on to um, Hong Kong sales, but there were other sales that took place here in, in, the, in the U.S., on stateside for Asia Week, and uh, we, we covered those as, as much as we could. And uh, next week, we've got some more videos coming, so there we go. As I said before, when, when we when we, when we changed, made some changes to the site and began the Patreon thing, and, and we have the global member pages that, that provide the revenue that pay for the site, um, we, I, I told you that we'd be doing more videos because it, it provides more revenue, and all the money that comes in on the site goes back into the site. So uh, I'm, I'm glad to do it as long as the revenue is there to pay for it. I'm happy to provide the, uh, the information and the content and do what we do. So if you're thinking of subscribing, please do and uh, if you haven't subscribed yet here to the YouTube channel please do I noticed I got an email um, I got a message from um, YouTube because they, they they let you know who's looking at the channel and who watches things this is sort of a little behind the scenes stuff and uh, one of the things they pointed out was that we have a very high return rate of regular viewers people that come back who are subscribers who have the notification bell checked and they come back and they like to watch the videos but we also have a huge number of people who have never bothered subscribing. And they're, they, according to YouTube, they're the same people that come back every week. So if, you, if you're one of those people, subscribe, all right? And, 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 and that way you don't miss anything because we're going to be doing more and more videos and, and they're going to slip by you'll get behind. So just a thought, just a thought. Now, uh, one of the things I wanted to mention uh, right up front was um, they used to be on, on live auctioneers. And uh, they weren't doing a very good job with auctions. We sort of gave them a rough ranking on the on the report card. And uh, a number of months ago, I got a whole uh, Waddington's got a hold of me. This is Waddington's up in Canada. Um, they have they hired some people to run their Asian art department and do it much more professionally. And they said they committed it to me. And I said, okay, we'll keep an eye on you. And they've got another sale coming up. And by, by, by goodness, they've done it. Um, and, and you know, kudos to them. I, I don't know if they know everything they need to know yet. But it's certainly obvious by looking at their lots, looking at their photography, that they they are making a genuine effort to turn their Asian art department into into a very good one. Um, um, and 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 I, I congratulate them on that. I think that's a great thing. And uh, they have a nice looking sale coming up. There's a, there's a whole bunch of jades in here. There's a lot of 19th century jades. There's some porcelains and so forth. This sale is on April 6th, and I suggest you check it out. Um, there's a lot of good lots in here too. If you're a dealer. And you, and you like to buy lots and break them up and sell them and make money. Um, this might be a good uh, uh, event for you. You will not find them on, on live auctioneers. You might find them on Invaluable. I'm not sure. But you can find them at their own website and register there and bid accordingly. Um, they've been very communicative, very nice people. They're, they seem to be very approachable and very responsive. Um, if you have a different experience, you let me know. But um, uh, for now, uh, we like to give people, you know, give them the benefit of the doubt if they, they, they seem sincere. And I think they are. I think they are. So um, uh, check out Waddington's uh, upcoming sale on uh, April 6th through the 11th of this month, this coming month, and so forth. All right. I'm going to miss this sale because, as I mentioned uh, last week, uh, my, uh, my wife and I, as some of you recall, we, were in, we went to Belize uh, last spring and we're going again this year we're going um, um, uh, at the end of the first week of April and we won't be back until the 28th or so of April but this year I will remember to bring my camp, my phone so I can record some videos and upload from down there I was very frustrated that I couldn't last year because there was I, there were things I wanted to, to point out and things that were happening and I was so, sort of uh, powerless to do anything about it uh, but uh, this year, I think we're all set for it, and, and we, we've got a, a good the place we're staying um, has upgraded their Wi-Fi, which was good last year. It's even better this year, so we're looking forward to getting down there. And a couple of our uh, kids are coming along with their girlfriends and uh, or girlfriend, I should say. One of them's bringing his girlfriend, and the other one is coming on his own. And uh, we're gonna, they're going to be down there for part of the time, so it'll be a lot of fun. It'll be a lot of fun. And uh, to this weekend, what are we doing? Oh, we're oh we're we're, we're we are coloring Easter eggs with my grandchildren here tomorrow. So that's what we're doing on the weekend. I hope you all got something planned because the Easter Sunday is coming up. All right, so check out the Waddington sale anyway. Anyway, do that now. The next thing I want to talk about is this. And uh, uh, these plates sold this past week, and this was at the Hill Auction Gallery in Sunrise, Florida, and they had one lot of these, 
two lots, three lots, and four lots. All of these are fakes. And you'll notice the prices, $4,700. Um, some of them brought $3,500. And this is not including the buyer's premium, which is another uh, 25 or 30%, 28, uh, 28%. So uh, $4,750 plus 28%, you're up around $6,000 for a set of brand new dishes. These dishes are not old. Um, um, I, I looked at them pretty carefully. Um, and I, I talked about these a few months ago about the fakes in the armorial market and that they're starting to produce them. And I believe these are the first wave of them. If they're not, they're the most perfectly preserved set of, 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 of Samson plates with no marks I've ever seen. But I, I, to me, these look like they're contemporary Chinese works and uh, they're, they're not authentic. And this is the kind of thing you wanna watch out for. Pay close attention to the details, how the leaves are drawn, how the shading is done, the gilding, all the little things that you expect to see, that very refined work that you would see on 18th century memorial pieces. They're not present on here, but these were convincing enough to get somebody to shell out a lot of money, um, especially if they bought the, all of them, because it's 4,700 plus premium, 2,750 plus premium, 3,500 plus premium, and 1300 plus premium. So you're, you're up around 15 or $20,000 by the time you're done. Um, and it's, it, it, the, these plates are worth about $20, $10 a piece. It's just modern dinnerware. So I, I feel bad for anybody that bought them, but this is, this is the danger of the market as it is today. All right, now I'm getting over to some results. Uh, there were some good results this week. Uh, uh, one of them was the, uh, this was the Andrew Jones sale. And we talked about this sale last week. And I talked about this particular lot last week because it had a look to it. And I said, I think there's a lot of money to be made with this lot. In particular, I was curious about this uh, uh, underglazed blue fishbowl up here at the top with underglazed red. And uh, a couple of these plates and these Nabashima looking dishes over here. And these Chinese bowls here and here. And uh, somebody obviously looked at them. Somebody went there in person, a number of people went there in person to do it, because this lot was estimated very, very modestly, as I mentioned last week, four to $600. And I thought, boy, if you could buy that lot for even, you know, a, a, a thousand or more, uh, you know, <laughs> you, you got a good profit built in. And uh, as you can see here, this set brought 14,000 plus premium of, of 30%. So they ended up selling for almost $18,000 for this lot, because I think there were a couple of very good bowls in there. And I got a feeling the best one is the one right in the middle. I have a feeling. All right, and that's why you want to. That's why you want always want to check out these big lots. And then, the, then the same sale with these, the Katani dishes. These were the bargain of the week. These were a great buy. And I think it was because they were marked Katani. They're not Katani. These are Kakiemon, um, um, uh, 19th century Kakiemon dishes, beautifully enameled. I don't think these were probably Arita. Um, I think they were 19th century Kakiemon, nicely done with these feet. Uh, very good enameling all the way around. And uh, somebody got the pair of them for $200. That was a great buy. That was a really good buy. And then this jar that we talked about also, I thought this was a striking porcelain. And I thought two or 2,500 to 3,000, I think somewhere in there, two or 3,000. It went way over that. Ended up selling for 5,500 plus the premium. But it was a striking piece of Japanese porcelain. Um, I love the koi fish on. It was signed on the bottom. I didn't know this. this I didn't look up the signature. I just thought, boy, what a beautiful piece of porcelain. And it sold itself. I mean, this was absolutely a wonderful piece. And it was good size, too, as I recall. It was 14 or so inches, 14 and a quarter inches in height, which was a nice size pot. It was a beautiful presentation. And I think somebody got a, a wonderful object. Absolutely great. And then back to the teapots. Uh, these are the Japanese Oribe uh, Arita rather not order bay, uh, or read up aware. Teapots, are eight of them in this lot. And I think this was a pretty good buy. They went for $400 plus the premium. So you're up around 500, but you got eight teapots. And if you're a dealer and you break these up, you got some old ones here. And uh, these are um, mostly, and I would, I would be very curious to know more about this one right here with the calligraphy all over it and the one next to it. All right, but the rest of them look mostly like uh, uh, late 18th and, and uh, later, uh, sort of a later Edo period. The bamboo pot here in the front looks like it's probably Meiji, but this one looks like it's probably Edo. That one looks like it's Edo. So whoever bought it, I think you have some opportunity there. If you break it up and, and price them properly, you could probably double or triple your money. All right, it's a good lot. 
And then this. Now, a number of people commented on that because they listed it as a Mughal school painting. And um, uh, a number of you commented on it and said that you th it was part of a, a, a Burmese scene, a well-known Burmese scene. And I looked it up. And there is a very famous uh, uh, painting, an original painting that was done depicting, a, 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 it's a commemorative battle scene uh, uh, done in Burma, and it's identical to this. And if you look it up on Google Images, you'll find it. You'll look it, you look it up, you'll find it on there. Um, and this, this was, I thought this was a wonderful picture. And it ended up selling for $1,800 plus the premium, so around 2400 25 Thirty percent, uh, yeah, about twenty-two hundred, twenty-three hundred dollars. I think this was a wonderful painting, just a wonderful painting. Beautiful colors, nineteenth century, uh, but but just uh, very meticulously done. And as I said, this is a a, a, a number of you knew what it was. Um, I just went by the description. I just read the title, and uh, apparently it was a, a famous Burmese battle scene. So good, good on all of you for spotting that. Very nice, good painting though. Regardless, very nice. And then this was also in the um, Andrew Jones sale. It was this very, very pretty pair of um, uh, uh, turquoise uh, shaped rim um, uh, uh, Peking glass bowls. I do not believe these were new bowls. Um, I, I had them on the global member pages and on the Patreon um, on the Patreon uh, uh, pages as well. Um, I, I thought they were very, very nice. Probably uh, 1850 to, or, or, or so, maybe a little later, but not a lot later. They're awfully refined. Uh, be, I love the way the rims are done. Uh, those drape, drape shaped rims and then you have the full stem underneath forming up around the bottom of the bowl and uh, that's something you typically see on 19th century pieces and not too often on 20th century they didn't bother they just give it a, a regular base this one they would coil the stem around it I thought these were very very nice and I don't think they somebody who ever bought them I don't think they overpaid for them at all they were um, uh, 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 Let's see, these were two, two and a quarter inches, the bowls, six inches in diameter each, and the pair of them sold for $1,000 plus premium. I think that was perfectly reasonable. And then moving along over to uh, this sale, this was the uh, Freeman Heinemann sale. Now, I think, I think they, 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 the sale did okay, but I think there were some great buys in here, and I think some of the lots, the, especially the Japanese lots, I think some of the consigners got a little out over their skis and demanding estimates in, in reserves. I think they maybe pushed the envelope a little bit much. Some of the lacquer and things, they did fine, so, and, then, and the inroads and so forth. But they had a number of things that didn't sell. And um, you know how it is if things don't sell. Contact the auction house. Get a hold of them. Um, you know, most times the consigners don't want the stuff back. They consigned it for a reason. They want it to go away. So get a hold of them. But there were a couple of very nice lots in here. One of them was this Japanese Amari sake bottle. This was I actually bookmarked this because it was the, one of the first pieces I saw in the sale. And I thought, that's a great piece of uh, Amari. And it was an 18, early 18th century example. Um, and it was uh, 11 inches tall. It had a very modest estimate of eight to 1,200. And it went way over that. And it sold for 2250 plus premium. But a very nice example. Beautiful, beautiful shape. Simply done in, in, in actually done in a wutsai uh, enamel. Uh, the color is uh, sort of a Chinese color base, but very, very, they use it in Chap Japan as well, obviously. But beautifully potted, classical form, um, nice looking pot. And interestingly, uh, may, some of you may have noticed this on the bottom. Matthias Komar, um, one of the great dealers of New York. He was a contemporary of uh, sort of the, 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 the C.T. Lou, the end of the C.T. Lou era and so forth. And I think he may have had a shop also in Philadelphia for some reason, where he started in Philadelphia and then ended up in New York. There was something there, because I've seen uh, Matthias Komar stickers on things before with um, uh, Pennsylvania uh, stickers on them. But at any rate, he was, he was a very, very highly regarded dealer, and he sold great things. And uh, he had apparently passed, this, this had passed through his hands. He was particularly uh, uh, well known for uh, Korean works of art and Japanese art, but he also handed a lot of Chinese. Handled a lot of Chinese stuff, but he also handled, handled Japanese and Korean. All right, and then this was in the sale, the Hamada Shoji jar with the iron red, iron splashes and so forth on it. This was a nice pot. And it, the estimate was, on this case, was a, a bit modest and it ended up going well over it for uh, 5,000 plus premium. So around $6,500 against a two to $3,000 uh, estimate. But uh, a classic example of, of, of Hamada work and uh, it was about, what, five inches? Eight, oh, it was a bigger jar. It was eight and three-quarter inches. It's a good-sized jar. That's a good-sized pot for him. Very nice. 
And then over here were some of the Chinese works. And these, these did very well. This flambe glaze vase. I wish they'd shown pictures of the bottoms of these. Uh, they didn't for some reason. But this one did very well. It was estimated at 1,500 to 2,500. And uh, it was a 16-inch jar. Now, uh, some of these are, are vase, rather. Some of these in this particular form with, the, with these uh, sort of string, string, string necks on them with these, with these lines going around them. Um, are, are more often in the 8 to 10 inch range. This was a particularly big one, 16 inches in height, uh, 16 and a quarter inches, and it ended up selling for uh, 6,000 plus the premium, or around, uh, that works out to about almost $8,000. And then this, the little stem cup uh, with the inscription on it, this was a very, very nice one. I had a number of inquiries about this through the uh, identification in the Inquiry Assistance Service, um, a lot of you were interested in this. I hope one of you got it. Um, it went a little higher than I thought it would. It was published in this book by Roger Caverne. He had originally sold it. Um, and, uh, it ended up selling for uh, 19000 And I think I had thought it might bring uh, uh, 10 or 15000 Went a bit over that with a six to $8,000 estimate. But um, it was a wonderful object. And, uh, and everybody knows who Roger Caverne is. And if he sold it, you know, that's as good as, as anybody else's word on authenticity. So it's off to the races. And then there was this, this very nice, unusual bottle vase, uh, uh, Chongzhen period, late Ming uh, dynasty. And this had a, uh, um, um, an old Marchant sticker on the bottom. This was a very nice uh, porcelain, plus the, uh, uh, the uh, receipt from the art world handling. And, uh, but what was interesting about this was unusual for the neck. Now, I don't know if it had been restored or anything to it uh, or not, but it doesn't look it. Uh, and I think it went fairly reasonably for what this is. I think this is an awfully interesting vase. And uh, it ended up going for 7500 plus the premium. Um, I, I, don't think, I, I, I thought it might bring a little more than that because it's a very unusual, very unusual form. Very unusual. And, uh, and when it was all done, of course, it, it ended up at about probably about $9,000 with the premium, but, but what a really interesting porcelain. And it would measure uh, nine inches in height, but the shape was highly unusual. And then there was this, this hexagonal uh, Chongzhen, the transitional period vase, well-known type, uh, sold for 8,000 plus premium. Fairly classic uh, 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 type. Uh, many of you have had them over the years. I've had them, um, um, and they come in a variety of sizes. This one was particularly well done. It apparently um, wasn't uh, damaged, and it was originally sold by John Burwald to the previous owner for 3,200 pounds, uh, about a little over 20 years ago. This time around, it brought 8,000 plus premium, so it's, it's, it's enjoyed some pretty good appreciation during that time. And uh, this, this vase measured nine and three quarters inches, inches in height. Nice porcelain, though. Now, this was one of the shocks, and maybe maybe one of you could comment on this. Um, I thought this was a heck of a nice plate, and I thought the reason the estimate was right on target, and this sold for a, a less than half of the low estimate. It was a charger, unbelievably well decorated, only sold for $500. And did any of you get a condition report on this? Was it damaged? Was something wrong with it? Because if, if there was nothing wrong with this, this was a steel. This was a, a wonderful piece of porcelain, an unusual type, Charger size, big, and and, and kung chi, and it went for five hundred dollars plus premium, or about six fifty with the with the premium, um, um, all in, I, and thirteen and a half inches in diameter. I thought that was a very 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 good buy. I, I thought this would for sure bring around fifteen hundred or so dollars. Uh, so, again, sometimes things do fall through the cracks. Leave a bid. That's all I can say. Just I, I'm going to say that until the end of my life. Always leave a bid. And then there's this, the, the little white miniature jars that had come from the um, uh, J.P. Morgan collection, as I recall, right? Yeah, J.P. Morgan. They came out of the J.P. Morgan auction back in the 19, what was it, 1920s or something? 1944, 1944. Uh, these wonderful little iron, underglazed iron red uh, jars with underglazed blue on these terrific little stands. I thought these were just lovely. I thought these were very, very interesting, beautifully done. They're, they're in the catalog. There it is from 1944. And they ended up selling for $3,250 plus the premium. So around $4,300, $4,200 roughly, somewhere in there. They were nice. They were very, they were gems. They were very, very nice. And I don't think $2,000 a piece was too much for them at all. I thought they were awfully nice and it was a pair. And then back to this, the persimmon glazed bowl um, with the uh, uh, Dalguan mark on the bottom. Uh, I thought it was fine. 
And uh, apparently so did the bidders that ended up going for $4,250. And it was interesting because I noticed in the um, one of the Christie sales, the Goldman, the Goldman sale, was, it, was that the one? They had a number of um, uh, 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 brown and, and cafe glazed uh, bowls from the, sort of the, the, the same early 19th century period as well. And they all did about the same price. That's the, that shows some consistency in the market. But I thought this was a really attractive little bowl. I really did with the white lip on the rim and, and the nicely shaped body and the very even glaze. I thought this was quite nice. And uh, $4,250 plus premium, so around $5,000 and oh, $5,300 or so, roughly. Nice porcelain, nonetheless. And then this, the Makazu Kozan uh, bowl with a swirl in it. I love this. I thought this was great. I, I actually uh, checked into the auction uh, just in time to watch it sell because I was really curious about what it would bring. Um, um, because I, I, I look at this design and think about the period in which this design was done and how far ahead of his time he was. Uh, when you think about this, this is, wasn't done in the 1950s or the 1980s. Uh, this was done at the end of the 19th century, and it would have been pretty sensational. Probably would have had some critics, too, because it was highly unusual. But how they do this, how he did that glaze is really quite amazing. Think about it. Perfectly straight lined, um, beautifully done swirl right into the bottom all the way through. Just a wonderful execution of glaze. And, and then the perfectly finished off foot with his potter's stamp on, on the edge of the foot there. Uh, sold for 1100 plus the premium. So I think that was a... I think that was a pretty good buy. I think uh, that's the kind of thing that if you're a Japanese porcelain collector, you're going to buy that and you're never going to sell it because it's going to become one of your favorites. And uh, it didn't go for a fortune, which is which is awfully interesting. All right. And then over here on eBay, they had pretty good results last week. Um, uh, there were a number of lots that sold. One of them was this. This was a legitimate 19th century brush pot. It didn't bring a lot because it had the crack in the body here. It had a couple of big cracks in it, which is pretty common with bamboo. And uh, sold for just $227. But it had very nice carving. It shows lo uh, lohans in a, in a, in a um, bamboo grove. And I, I like this a great deal. I like this a great deal. And they're out here and they're looking at scrolls. They're examining objects. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is there an eighth somewhere around? Usually there's eight lohans. But at any rate, it's, it's a heck of a nice thing. And uh, the, the back of it is clouds on it. There's the eighth guy over here. There he is. Okay. Uh, it's a nice it's a nice looking pot. And I looked at it pretty carefully. The bottom of it looks fine. That's what it should look like. The interior of it's adequately grungy. And, uh, but the cracks hurt the, hurt the value. All right. And uh, the, the, there is a way to fix that, incidentally. Uh, if, if you buy one that's cracked like that, I'll tell you how to do it. And you can close that crack up significantly. All right. And at uh, any rate, uh, it sold for just $227, which was a wonderful buy, especially if you, can if you know how to close the crack up. All right, and then over here, $251 for this um, 18th century Chinese export gravy boat based on an English silver form. I thought this was a wonderful buy. And, I, and, and I've, I've said this in the past, these pieces right now, for whatever reason, are going very, very inexpensively. And when you consider the quality of the work, the quality of the work on these export wares, um, even in relation to some of the imperial wares that were done and things that were done in China for the upper classes, this stuff is certainly as good or better than much of it. The, you, the, some of the export wares, and I'm going to say it over and over, when you look at really fine China trade, and really fine 18th century export wares, they are easily on a par with anything that was done for the domestic consumption in China. And uh, this was part of a big dinner service, obviously, probably 120, 130, 150-piece dinner service, uh, for, probably for the English market at the time, um, but uh, beautifully done. And somebody got a wonderful piece of porcelain for $251 plus. Like the shipping from New York to here was just, what, 15 bucks. Very reasonable. And then you have this, this Ben Karang um, um, uh, 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 lidded jar. This was a pretty big one. Um, it measured uh, nine inches in height, so a lot of them are five or six inches, it's sort of a taller one. Vibrantly decorated, late 19th century, and it did very well. It ended up selling for $1,009, but a very nice example with beautiful colors on a black background. And I think the black background with white and yellow and red um, in, in, is the enamel uh, uh, enamels around it. It makes it fairly dramatic. I, I like the effect very much. <clears throat> and I think $1,009 is sort of where the prices are right now for these. So it's perfectly good. 
And then over here to this, the little Korean silver inlaid box. Now, this was a small one. It was um, just uh, basically uh, six centimeters by six centimeters by nine centimeters. So it was, it was the uh, its longest dimension. It was only four inches. Fairly small. And it did just fine. It ended up selling for $404. These are very, very nice, and they're often sold. You got to watch for these because they often get uh, um, sold and they turn up at auctions as Japanese, and these this type is not. These are Korean, and the Korean ones are worth a bit more. But the Jap, if they get them, if they list them, and people think they're convinced they're Japanese, um, they they can only sell. Sometimes they sell for only a hundred dollars or so, when in fact they're Korean and they're worth three or four times that amount. So you keep your eyes open for those when you're out looking around. All right, they do turn up. All right, and then this is another bamboo brush pot. This was the, the, the second one that was in there last week. I thought this was very nice. Again, uh, probably mid-19th century, beautifully carved. It needs oil. This thing is so desperate for oil. If you have bamboo and wooden brush pots, for God's sakes, oil them. Um, uh, keep them moist so they don't crack on you. Uh, that's, what, that's why they crack. They crack because of central heating. So uh, if, you, if you've got them laying around your house, oil them up. I, oil, I, have, a bunch of, I have a lot of brush pots. And uh, I oil them all, um, I don't know, a couple times uh, uh, every three months or so. I just got, oh, I just got a, a new brush pot. Hold on a second. Okay, I'm back. I just got uh, this one. And it's a, a nice Zeton pot uh, that I picked up on a house call. And uh, I did a video over on the, bit of on the, um, on the uh, Patreon page. The weekly video over there this week was about this brush pot and about the house call. But uh, I just got this. It couldn't resist. And, um, but I have another one, so I don't know if I'm keeping it or not. But at any rate, uh, this, this turned up this week. It's a very nice, probably early 19th century. It's in wonderful shape. And uh, I, got, I took the plug out so you can look through it, but at any rate. Um, so they do turn up, and this one wasn't cracked, which pleased me to death. Because <laughs> they, they often are very cracked. Anyway, this was also a nice one. This one that was in the, in, on eBay. And this is a perfectly good pot. And, and, and what, you, what you do when you look at them, look at the high points. Look at the, look at the figures. Are they, are they detailed? You have a fellow here on a water buffalo, for example. Is he detailed? Is the, is the wood grain, is it appealing on the animal? Um, are the hands and face done properly? All that, the way the pine trees are done. All these little elements. Um, look at the way the rocks stick out and so forth. This was a beautifully carved pot. The back of it is plain. As you can see, it's got splits, and it had that, that as I mentioned last week, that, that tin liner. Uh, but this was a good brush pot. I really, I really liked it. And um, uh, I, 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 didn't, I, I didn't leave a bit on it because I was getting, I was getting the, uh, the, the Z-Tan one, and, the, and there's another one that, that I got as well. So I did that instead. But anyway, this sold for $625. Very nice example. I think it was a very good buy. Uh, the shipping was a little heavy from Florida. I noticed it was a hundred dollars. Oh, it's expedited. Um, if they if off if they offer expedited shipping, unless you're in an enormous hurry to get it, just have them send everything regular priority mail. And uh, that brush pot would in that case, instead of being a hundred expedited, some special handling would only be around uh, what thirty or forty dollars, something like that, less than half. All right, and then over to this. Uh, this really brought a lot. And, uh, uh, a big, big uh, 19th century flambe glazed uh, pot. Um, here's the bottom of it. Very typical of um, later 19th century uh, porcelains. Uh, but this one was quite large. It was uh, 41 centimeters tall, um, which, which, is, which is around uh, about 16 or 17 inches. Uh, nicely done. Um, let's see if we can get back up, find the whole piece. Hold on a second. There we go. There it is. And... Uh, Nicely glazed, good-looking example, 16 or so, 17 inches tall, and it sold for $4,000, which seemed to me like to be like a lot of money um, uh, for that, but uh, somebody liked it a great deal. A couple of people liked it a great deal because it didn't get, had 69 bids, so uh, go figure. So I guess the monochrome market's still pretty healthy. All right, and then uh, what's coming up this week, there's a bunch of things on here. Uh, that we've loaded onto the uh, a newsletter page. One of them is uh, is this very nice stem cup with some, with some characters on it. It appears to be a, uh, uh, a a late 18th, early 19th century stem cup. 
Um, probably, I think probably Jai Jing period, maybe around there roughly. But it's very attractive, nicely done. There's a good photograph of the, of the bottom of it. There it is. Uh, and then there has this little uh, a bowl with the uh, script on it. That bowl is damaged. The bowl has a hairline in it and a chip out of it. I think he just threw it in there. And this is um, from UK Asian Art. It's up to $176. It closes on Sunday. But I like the stump cup. And I expect this will probably get up to six or $700 before it closes. And then over to this, the Cloisonne vase closes in just uh, uh, on Sunday as well. Uh, I like this. I mentioned it last week. A nice uh, 19th century example. Um, nice colors. Looks to be in pretty good shape. It's got a tiny dent in the foot right there at the bottom. But other than that, I think it's fine. Um, there's a little blemish. It's not a big dent. It's just a little blemish right there on the foot. And there's some enamel loss off the bottom, which shouldn't bother you. Um, you don't want enamel loss off the body if you can help it. Um, and there may be a couple of little flakes here and here, but nothing too dramatic. Uh, nice looking bottle. Should, should go for three to $400 by the time it's done. It's a nice one, though. And then over here to this. Now, this just went up this week. This is uh, from Migalari. Uh, he, he's got a pile of stuff on here this week. So, so check out the, the uh, newsletter page. Um, on bitamount.com, but he's got this very nice reticulated uh, Femi Ver um, uh, Immortals vase with uh, uh, figures floating around all over it and dragons and whatnot. It's a very well-known type. These were made during the 19th century. And uh, see if there's a good picture of the bottom. You say there's a, yeah, there it is, flat wide bottom. And this one they put a, uh, looks like a Jai Jing mark on it. It's not Jai Jing. It's later than that, but it's good looking. It's a, they, they have a uh, T. Lohan vase. This okay. He, he said that mark is a Kang Shi mark. I didn't look it up. Didn't check it. Yeah, it is a Kang Shi mark. He's right. Okay, Kang Shi mark, but it's a 19th century vase. He points out correctly. All right, and then this. That's that. This is a nice vase, by the way. This this based on its height. It's uh, 34 centimeters, so it's 13 to 14 inches in height. It should do pretty well. It should get up 800 to a thousand dollars, or 900 to 1300 actually, somewhere around there. Um, is this. This is a very nice reticulated Yixing pottery teapot. I'm not convinced it's 19th century. I think it might be early 20th century, but it's beautifully done. It's beautifully done. This is a, If you've been looking for a nice, um, uh, maybe even a daily use Yixing pot, you want to look into this. Right now, the bidding is up to a whopping 11 pounds or, or $13.90. It closes in five days. It'll go up a bit. Um, it's got a circular mark on the bottom. Um, it looks like a it looks like a 20th century uh, uh, mark to me, and the foot looks like it probably is as well. But um, I, I don't think it's I don't think it was made yesterday. I think this was made a little uh, back in the Republic period. But it's a very nicely done pot. Whenever it was done, it's a beautiful example, and it's a double walled affair. So it's reticulated on the outside, but it's solid on the inside. So you can't put tea in it. It's not just a show a show uh, a show pitcher or a show a show pot. All right, and then this is Kung Shi uh, Jar, uh, very nice. It went up just the other day. It's got six days and 11 hours left. It's up to $651. And notice the lid. It's got a really good um, uh, late Qing lid on it and a very nice um, uh, ebonized base. So the, the base and the lid are about worth where the bid is right now. Uh, those that base and the lid are worth about five or six hundred dollars. You haven't paid for the jar yet. It'll take off at the end. This should do pretty well. It should bring three or four thousand. It does have a hairline in the neck though? I think right there. Uh, so you want to check out, check the condition. But it's a good-looking vase. All right. And then another brush pot. This is um, uh, from Stubbsy Wubsy. This is a 19th century example. He just dated it as Ching, which is fine. Uh, I think it's probably a, a second half of the 19th century example with this big block of script on it. Could even be, eh, technically, it could even be Republic, but I don't think it is. Here's a picture of the bottom of it. It's been uh, nicely done, uh, beautifully carved. And, uh, you know, it, it's got that feel that they get when they were coming out of, at the end of the Qing Dynasty, into the Republic period, I think. But it's made somewhere around there, and it's, it's a good-looking pot. And right now it's up to just $13. It's got uh, eight days to go. It's got a ways to go. It'll be on the newsletter page on, on the site this week. And then this, there's a nice piece of Chouan ware. Um, uh, if any of you like uh, flambe glaze Chouan ware, this is a nice one. 19th century, has that very rustic foot to it there. But I like the glaze on this a lot. And of course, it's a U-form beaker. 
um, well-known uh, type based on an early bronze form. And then the last thing I, I'm going to mention is uh, this. Now, this is a piece of Gutani that will be on there, and it'll, it may have closed by the time this thing goes up because it ends in a few hours. But um, it, this, it doesn't look like it got any bids, and if you like it, you, you may be able to approach the seller and see if he wants to make a deal on it. it, it, it right now, the opening bid price is only $95. It's an 8.5-inch bowl, and it looks like a fairly good quality one. For some reason, it slipped through the cracks this week. Um, and the shipping is $9 from Connecticut to Massachusetts, so he's not a thief on shipping. So that's a good thing. All right? So that's, a, that's sort of about it for the week. Uh, there was a lot going on. Uh, there's, a, there's some stuff coming up next week. I'm going to talk about a sale that's it's coming up in New York um, uh, in a few weeks. It's got some very, very good uh, uh, Chinese objects in it and um, all that. Now, uh, if, you, if, you, if you haven't subscribed yet on the newsletter page and you're wondering what that's all about, this is it. It's on, on bitamount.com here. I know a lot of you subscribe to it because I, I don't know, there's thousands of you. Okay. <laughs> Because I, I, I see how many, how, much, how many emails come out each week. Um, and, but if you haven't signed up for it yet, sign up for the newsletter. It's free, and um, you get notified about what's going on. And uh, there will be a bunch of new videos in here this week. And this is last week's uh, results. There's a few things on here that have not closed yet, and they'll carry forward, of course, as we always do um, until they do close. Uh, but there was there's some decent things turned up. I'm waiting to see how this... Uh, this double gourd Korean uh, thing does. It's up to $215, $215, $271. Um, I think it's awfully nice. That'll be in there again this week as a reminder. It doesn't have its original lid, but, but it's an interesting piece of porcelain. And uh, there's some other things that'll be in there this week I think you'll like as well. So there we are. That's it for the week. Have a great Easter weekend. Those of you that are celebrating, having family over, have a nice leg of lamb or, uh, you know, whatever you're doing. And um, um, we're going to be getting starting to get packed. And uh, next week will be my last video from here. We'll do some videos next week. And then I'll, I'll, I'm going to be taking off and uh, getting into Central America. And when I do, we'll get set up and um, um, report back how, how things are. All right. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't. And uh, um, go out there and I hope you find something you'll love out there this weekend. Some auction. Okay. Bye-bye.